When it comes to political unions, we tend to think of the United States, the European Union, or maybe even the African Union. But throughout history, there have been many more political unions, some of which lasted several hundred years, but are still largely forgotten about. So what are the strangest political unions ever? Denmark-Norway was a powerful union that lasted just under 300 years. As the name suggests, it was between Denmark and Norway and included their overseas islands. As a major empire, they also had land in India, Africa and the Caribbean. At first, the union was ruled by a democratically elected monarch, but that didn't last long. It became an absolute monarchy in the year 1600. 214 years later, the Union was forced to split up by the other European nations. This was as punishment for siding with France in the Napoleonic Wars. On top of being split in two, Norway was forced into another union with Sweden, which lasted until 1905. Denmark-Norway was originally born out of a much larger political union called Kalmar. But that's enough about Scandinavia for now. The Federation of Arab Republics was an obviously ill-fated union put together by Colonel Gaddafi. Gaddafi was insane, and he wanted to create one single Arab country. So a referendum was taken in Libya, Egypt and Syria. Each resulted in landslide victories for the pro-union side. The union lasted between 1972 and 1977 before its inevitable collapse. It would have taken a truly great leader to unite the three countries. And clearly Gaddafi wasn't that leader. There were actually several other unions in the Middle East one between Egypt and Syria, one between Jordan and Iraq, and one between Egypt, Syria and Yemen. So the Arabs really seem to love political unions. The whole Middle East is like a graveyard of failed states. If I were to ask you to name three countries perfect for unification, you'd probably say Ghana, Guinea and Mali. Their union lasted from 1958 to 1961. This was during the decolonization of Africa, so no one really knew which countries were meant to exist. It was called the Union of African States as they expected many more nations to join. None did. It was almost as if the union didn't exist as there was no common currency or leader so each country had different laws and foreign policy. Even today there are people attempting to create new unions. The East African Federation would see the unification of Burundi, Kenya, South Sudan, Uganda, Rwanda and Tanzania. Its population would be almost 170 million. All member states have actually expressed interest in this, and negotiations are ongoing. History tells us the union will likely fail, but people do tend to ignore history. Gaddafi's oil has fed a vision far beyond the needs of Libya's two million people. He shares NASA's dream of a united Arab world, but united under the leadership of Mama Gaddafi, the first step he saw on that road was union with Libya's neighbour, Egypt. In return for promises of economic assistance, Anwar Sadat signed an agreement with Gaddafi to merge the two countries within one year. Under the agreement, Gaddafi would share as an equal the presidency of 37 million people. The Arab world was sceptical. Few could believe that the Egyptians would allow themselves to be ruled by a young hothead from the desert, or that Gaddafi would make good on his pledge of aid. Perhaps not wolves, but certainly reluctant allies. Sadat was hesitant to embrace Gaddafiism. 
In July, Gaddafi goaded thousands of Libyans to march on Egypt to pressure Sadat into cooperation. But Sadat had bigger fish to fry. As Gaddafi's hysterical campaign reached its height, Sadat and Syria